Hail Reckoners and welcome back. Today's indie game is The Average Everyday Adventures of Samantha Brown. Now, uh, my uh, podcast co-host, host Char, aka Poo Poo Noob, pointed me at this game because he knows I quite enjoy uh, linear, story-driven visual novels, essentially, especially when they're free, as this game is on Steam. Now, the main thrust of this game is you play as Samantha Brown, who is in college and is dealing with crippling social anxiety to the point where, you know, it's a, it's a big deal to have to go into the, the public common area to cook oatmeal, and this is something I can highly empathize with. Now, doing YouTube, uh, not really, it's not really a cause, but it's a symptom of my efforts to become less, uh, socially introverted and awkward, um, and I'm making great strides, but, uh, part of the reason this is a YouTube channel and not a stream is it's far easier for me to deal with, uh, you dear reckoners, uh, uh, in my head as opposed to actual people in real time, but, uh, I'm definitely probably not on the level of Samantha Brown, but let's see, I have not played this before, I don't know how many endings there will be, or what kind of decisions will have to be made. I look forward to this. Let me see where to begin. Somewhere in the middle of a country lived a girl. This is England, or Britain, I don't know where England stops. Uh, well, to be slightly, well, to be slightly more specific, the girl lived at a university in the middle of the country. She lived in one of the most remote dorms on the university's campus. But no one at her school called it a dorm, they all called it a flat, so that's what she called it. Her name was Samantha, and there wasn't anything particularly interesting about her. It was just another weeknight, or maybe it was the weekend, Samantha wasn't entirely sure, nor did she really care. Samantha spends most of her time alone in her room. The only time she's not in her room is when she's in class, at the library, or hiding in a corner somewhere drinking coffee. Samantha's been sitting in her bed for the last six hours, waiting for everyone to fall asleep. She's hoping to catch the kitchen in a rare state of abandonment. Fun fact, one year in college, I lived in a house uh, that had been kind of like remodeled to be rented out to people parcel. So I was in the master bedroom, like this back kind of added on wing to the house, which had a sliding glass door into the yard. And I took that as my primary entrance and exit to the house. I didn't use the front door because I didn't want to walk down the hall, through the living room, I have to deal with seeing other people. So, rare states of abandonment are something to be treasured. And this is where we join her. That cat has a great pose. Oh, before I forget, watch out for the hunger meter. Ah, we're okay for now. It's there to let you know how hungry Sam is getting. But be careful, too many wrong decisions and something terrible could happen. Got it. Ah, one more thing. To move forward in the story, simply click on the dialogue box. I figured that out. <laughs> if you need to return to the main menu, click the upper left corner. Your progress will be automatically saved so you can continue to request at any time. Well, that's it for me. Good luck. Thank you. I need it. Hey, uh, what, you, what did you do today, my sweet? I assume I'm Sam Katz. Oh, this is a bot? Oh, jeez. Hey, not much. Just hung out with the cat. What about you? Meh, the usual. Did some homework, watched my show, drank obscene amounts of coffee. So, do you think anyone would be in the kitchen right now? I don't know, what time is it there? Like, 10.30ish. Also, why do you care if anyone is in the kitchen? Hmm... Well, I don't know what the truth she's gonna say is. I'm curious what she'll say. Did that go up? I don't know, I'm assuming, when, I'm assuming it went up. Cause I want to go make oatmeal, but I don't want anyone to see me making the oatmeal. Do you really think people care? It's possible. I don't care if they care, but they'll silently judge me. And that causes angst. Have you had dinner yet? Well, not really. Sam! Well, I was going to get food, but then the grocery store was closed, and I was watching my show, and I was all, I could go make oatmeal or just eat a flapjack from the vending machine, but I, they have flapjack vending machines in the UK? What a glorious place. But I'm still not entirely sure what a flapjack is. Oh, maybe they don't? So... Sam, don't be silly. Go make yourself some food. Fine, I swear. If I see anyone... 
Okay, here I go. Five minutes later. <laughs> I can do this. I just have to get out of bed, get the oatmeal, and walk to the kitchen. That's easy. This is actually a compound issue, I think. So for me, even though right now I, I work from home, and I'm taking a break to record, even though I work from home, which A, is not a public place, and I am alone, it still takes quite a strong incentive, i.e. hunger pains, for me to get up and make myself something as simple as a bowl of cereal. And that obviously is completely unrelated to social anxiety. So she obviously has a social anxiety of the people, but me, there's the people thing, if this was a public place, as well as just, I don't know what the, the cause of it is, but some sort of lethargy. And I don't know, maybe it's because these glowing screens can entertain me at all times, but uh, it's a compound issue here. So for me, in her situation, even if I knew for a fact that the kitchen and the way to it would be empty, just getting out of bed and away from the computer, putting on shoes, blah blah blah, that would heighten the impedance for this course of action for me immensely. <sighs> People walk into kitchens every day. Oh, I love a little hedgehog tissue dispenser, that's so cool! See, the oatmeal is just right over there. You got apple, you got maple, you got... Berry. I'm quite fond of a cinnamon roll flavor. It's like dessert. Okay, I'm officially out of bed. That is a massive first step. Good job, Sam. You are a champ. Hmm, which kind of oatmeal do I feel like today? Good, let me choose. Uh... I feel like apples and cinnamon. Yes! That is the one I want. Now, I just have to figure out how many packets to make. Should I make one, two, or three packets? I usually find one packet's enough, but I usually only eat oatmeal in the morning. I mean, unlike most breakfast foods, which I eat whenever the heck I feel like, oatmeal seems to be pretty strongly rooted in the morning. So if I was eating oatmeal for dinner, I'd probably want more. Something goes with two. Two seems appropriate. Two says, I'm hungry, but I'm not a cow. Two is a totally reasonable amount of oatmeal for someone to eat. Indeed. Ha! Huh? Woo. I made a choice. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Making choices sucks. Although making choices for myself is a lot easier than making choices that also affect other people. I mean, that goes without saying, I suppose. Look at me, making choices like an adult. Wait a sec, though. I still need something to eat this with. You mean like a bowl and spoon? Got it. Ah, what do we have here? And now it's time to play... What do we have here? I only saw one spoon to choose, but I will make that choice. Can I click? Okay. The only game show where you choose that spoon! Please choose that spoon. Ah, I gotta click it. I did it. I won an amazing all-purpose eating utensil worth an estimated value of $199.95. That is a very valuable spoon. Alright, now I just have to grab my mug and off we go. Is that cup big enough for two packets of oatmeal? I don't know, man. All right. Mug, check. Oatmeal, check. Spoon, yep. I think that's it. Hmm, wait, just hang on a minute. What if someone in, someone's in the hallway? I mean, should I go out there right this second? Well, waiting is unlikely to give us further knowledge that we wouldn't already have. Perhaps the game wants us to wait and listen for voices or footsteps. How, um, um, I say yes, go already. Because quite frankly, maybe I'm not a psychologist, but from my experience, I think being thrust into situations of social anxiety normalizes them and it makes them less anxiety inducing so this is probably the healthier mentally choice of action i don't know that went up crap how'd that go up i'm an adventurer that's cool that's a cat fedora that's really cool why am i high whoa i have to walk all the way down there i'm never gonna make it why take it slow no 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 move it you gotta move it gosh dang it so you're getting hungry 
There, that's a little better. I just have to take this one step at a time. The thing is, I'm just not a people person. Oops, I missed something. I mean communal kitchens? That's the worst possible idea. Here you go, eat in front of a bunch of complete strangers. How about no? How about if I eat in the safety and comfort of my own room? Well, absolutely. You take, you mean, you make the food there, you come back. Public kitchens are born anyway. I mean, I guess you could take your laptop with you, but what are you going to do while you eat? No one would bother me then. Yeah, that's a much better idea. But here I am, creeping like a creeper. Bah. Uh-oh. Did I bump something? Oh no. Shit. Is someone coming? Okay, false alarm. Onward. I just want to eat my oatmeal in peace. I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to hear anyone. And I sure as hell don't want to talk to anyone. Cause you know what? The last time I talked to someone, they told me I did my eyeliner wrong. Small eyes. That's what she told me. It made my eyes look small, and I should trust her because she knew how to do makeup. Well, what the hell am I doing? I wear makeup every day. Is she saying I don't know how to do my own makeup? Because that's super rude. Like, how do you refrain from talking about my face until we've known one another for like five minutes? Is... is that the light? Oh my god, what if people are in there? Or worse? What if they want to eat with me? That is actually possible in a college dorm. People are obnoxiously, aggressively friendly in such places. Sh should I go in? Probably. Running away means to make that walk again, which is disastrous. Ah, oh, crap. Nightmare confirmed. Should I say hello? Do people still say hello to one another? That is... Absolutely, the crux of the problem. The, uh, because they looked at me. That would have been the time to say hello if I'd wanted to. But they also opted not to say hello, and they went back to their conversation, implying, you know, I'm not going to, like, interrupt them. I'm not going to call their attention back to me just for this barbaric, social, imagined ritual thing. We're not saying hello. If you're, what should I do? Don't say anything. Yeah, screw them. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to make oatmeal. What about it? Everyone thinks oatmeal is gross. No, they don't. But it's really good, and it sweeps cholesterol from the arteries, and that seems important. Does it really do that? I don't know. I, I, oatmeal's good. There, I made it. That's like half the battle. Only half? Okay, so I can't use any pots and pans, because I don't technically own any, but there is this electric kettle. I'm assuming anyone can use that. That is a superior thing to use. You could also get away with using the microwave. Microwave is totally acceptable, in my opinion. I mean, I remember in the student orientation guide, it said all communal kitchens came with a kettle, so they must be talking about this kettle, I think. I've never actually used one of these before, but it can't be that hard to figure out. It's not. Still, you'd think there'd be an instructions somewhere. What's that coil about? Do I take that thing out? No, come on, that doesn't make any sense. Bah! Just gonna fill the kettle up. What's the worst that could happen? This seems to be going well. Uh-oh. You just have to avoid being electrocuted. Now what? Do I wait here while this heats up, or should I go back to my room? I wonder what everyone else does. I guess it doesn't make sense for me to go all the way back to my room, because then I have to walk all the way back here, and that seems like a horrible idea. I completely agree, Sam. Meh, what should I do? Wait here, indeed. I got time counting down, okay. It's boiling. It's boiling. You know what? I didn't appreciate how those girls were looking at me. Well, that's a little judgy on your part, Sam. I mean, why are they sitting in here anyway? That's true. Shouldn't they be hanging out in their room or something? Not loitering in the kitchen? That would be nice. Um... I mean, maybe they have a third room? I'm not sure what the room situation is here. But maybe it's a private conversation in public? I don't know how those work. Oh, I didn't make a choice. Okay, let's get these packets ready. Oh, there's a countdown. I missed opportunities to explore things. I'm an idiot. Get the packets ready. They are ready. Okay, now we are getting somewhere. Interesting. I put the oatmeal in first. Maybe that's what she did. I thought she just opened it. Okay, the oatmeal's in there. Yeah, you, you, you pour the oatmeal first, then the water, because the oatmeal doesn't sink nicely. If you pour the water on the oatmeal, it, it's nicer. Just trust me. Give it a quick stir. And now... We retreat to the room. I wait. For what? <laughs> Meh, what's so funny? They better not be laughing about me. 
Think, Sam. What the heck can I do to waste some time while this cooks? What do you- I mean, just take it back to your room! Is it too hot to carry? Because I can't just stand here looking at the oatmeal like an idiot. Yes, you can. You totally can. Uh, I guess clean. What is there to clean? I don't want to get people judging me for touching their stuff, though. Yes, cleaning. That's a totally normal person thing. Cleaning is a legitimate reason for someone to be in the kitchen for an extended period of time. The other option is to own your weirdness. Like, if you were to just stare at the oatmeal and somebody walked in at you, you could just keep staring at the oatmeal. It'd be, it'd be you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to interact with you. It'd be great. Okay, finally. Please, oh please, be something resembling cooked food. Blah, blah, blah. How is this not even close to being done? Great, great, now what? Did you use more water? What do we not being done? I'm pretty sure... I guess if the water wasn't warm enough, it wouldn't be done. I don't understand. Oatmeal's like... Eh. Huh. Well, if it's not done, I'm not going to eat it. We're gonna try the microwave. I guess. Don't explode. Do not explode. Can oatmeal explode? It looks like it is. Crap. Will not explode really. Why? It's gonna overflow. What do I do? What do I do? Just stop it. Uh, stir it. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear my heartbeat. Okay, I guess I guess I'll just stir this every few seconds. Every few seconds. Gotta gotta cook it, I guess. I don't know what the issue here is with it. I've never had this much trouble with oatmeal before. <sighs> but it's every five seconds. This is really awkward. People in the room are like, what is she doing with the microwave? Crap. This is actually a... The heartbeat's making this scene as intense as it would be. This microwave is so freaking loud. How are these not the same thing? Keep cooking it. Whatever that means. Hey, it didn't go up. That's a good thing, I think. Is that the first, right, the second right decision we've made? So, I did not choose the option to say put it back in the microwave, and yet we put it back in the microwave. So I have no clue what these decisions mean. This... It's gotta be getting close now. Uh... Yeah, please hurry. Ah, it's a big jump. I really wish I understood what is wrong with this oatmeal, what we're trying to fix, so I can make a more informed decision. My lack of oatmeal culinary knowledge is shooting me in the foot. It's been a while since I've had oatmeal. Cereal's my jam. That's it. It's done. It's got to be. Porridge perfection achievement. Fudge cake! That's hot. Yeah. That's, how the hell am I supposed to get it out of the microwave? Ooh, using your shirt looks a little awkward. Your shirt's not that long. I say use it anyway. It's worse to spill it. Um, I guess I'll just take out the cup first and use my shirt like a glove. This is actually ingenious. Yep, I think yes. I think this is actually working. People seeing this, it would look weird, but they would instantly understand what was going on. So this isn't too weird. They would be less instantaneously understanding if I walked by like this. Like, they would eventually arrive at the conclusion that my hand is hot. But if you see somebody holding a cup with their shirt, you pretty much instantly assume the cup is hot. Anyway, I'm leaving so you can have your precious kitchen back. So if she actually said this to them, that's very passive aggressive. And she shouldn't have done that. I assume she is internal though. Whew, I made it out of there. Gotta go, just have to get back to my room. Almost there. Unlock my door. I guess I should put my cup down. Well, the only option is yes. Yes, you should. Uh, crap. Here we go. Wait. Why? Where are my keys? Oh! Ooh, I can't believe I forgot my keys. That is pretty majorly harsh. I guess I'll just wait here until someone comes by. Someone how? Shit. 
Is this her personal room? Or is this the room to the wing where she lives in? Are they individually locked off sections? The kitchen's the common public area, but you need to have one of the many keys to the side area? I'm not sure. Ah, that went disastrously. Could I remember the keys in the beginning, though? Or I just clicked them, I suppose. I didn't- I don't recall seeing keys. Sam? Where are you? I'm worried. Oh man. That's so sad. That is not a happy ending. <sighs> uh oh, you failed, and Samantha is still hungry. I would like to try again. Also, I'm not. If I quit, it wouldn't be rage quit. Don't insult me. Where are we now? Where do we start? Oh, we're heading out the door again. I see. So we don't have our keys. There's no option to remember keys, or maybe this is a game I have to replay again. Um, I'm going to do the second playthrough in part two. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in part two, still brimming with social anxiety. Signature catchphrase.